So a couple days ago, I made a video where I kind of walked you through how I would design a reservation system. And I kind of realized that there's some stuff that I didn't mention, especially around transactions and concurrency and stuff like that, that you're gonna have to figure out when it comes to writing stuff to your database. So I tried to take this one step further and actually provide some code to walk you through an endpoint where people can kind of put locks on a seat and have that seat kind of get relinquished after five seconds. So just to kind of demo what's going on here, I'm gonna load up Thunder Client. And we have an endpoint called API seats that you can do a post request to. You can provide it a seat ID, and then you can also provide it your user ID. So when you click send, it's going to go ahead and reserve that seat for five seconds. Now, obviously five seconds is kind of short. You'll probably see this on like Ticketmaster or any type of like concert application where you need to buy tickets, booking a cruise ship, buying a seat on a plane but I kind of shorten it down so I can demo this. So if I hit this twice in a row, you'll notice that the second request says, hey, sorry, the seat is reserved. Try again later, All right? So it's pretty straightforward. But the main thing I wanted to show is that if you don't write the code in a way that can handle for race conditions, you may have people overbook seats, right? So two people, you know, go through the whole process. They both pay for the same seat. And then we show up for their flight. They say, you know what? You, this flight was overbooked because our software sucks. And now someone has to get kicked off the plane. So how do you verify if the code you're writing actually can handle race conditions? So I wrote a little SH script. Let me be honest, I used OpenAI to write this script for me, but it basically does some curl requests to this API seats. And if I go ahead and just do these all as background processes, and if I do a hundred requests, what I wanna do is I wanna verify that I should only get one successful booking of the seat and all the others should fail. So I have this code here that says, if status code is equal to 200, print out an echo statement, otherwise don't do anything. So after running this, we should only see one echo statement and that means that only one person actually was able to reserve this seat, okay? There we have it, it only printed out once. Even if we did a hundred requests to that same endpoint, we can even bump this up to like 500 if we wanted to and just double check that everything is good. This gives me some confidence that, hey, this code that I wrote is resilient to some race conditions. All right, so let's dive through the code and try to figure out how this endpoint works. Now I'm using Next.js and I have a API endpoint that accepts a post request. Now how I start this off is I do a drizzle DB transaction. Typically when you're dealing with concurrency, you're gonna want a transaction. It just allows you to kind of atomically write and kind of roll back from your database if something were to go wrong. So the way this transaction works is I am fetching the seat based on that seat ID we're passing in the post request. So then I create a date and I add five seconds to it. That's gonna be used later on if the reservation gets um, created. So moving down the line 22, I'm saying if the seat exists and then I check if the expires at is greater than now. So like the reservation is not yet expired. I go ahead and just throw an error so that no one can actually book this seat. Now, if the seat existed and it is expired, what I do is I run a update here and I set the new user ID to be the one that was sent in the post request. And I also set a new expires at. So I give that new user that seat and I let it expire in another five seconds. So the key part of this, the make sure that the race conditions don't happen is this conditional update, right? So this where clause. And notice here, I'm checking to make sure that when this write tries to get committed to the database, it's gonna to check to make sure that indeed the thing has been expired, okay? So I'm doing a less than or equals to make sure that the seat that expires is less than the current date of right now. And so if this query were to run successfully, we go ahead and just return an ID here. Uh, I, technically it's like a list of IDs and I check to make sure that, hey, if the length is zero, then that means that this write never actually happened because for some reason there's a race condition and there was a seat that was not yet expired and I tried to write to it. So we're gonna go ahead and just throw an error if we found a length of zero. Now, otherwise this else condition is basically checking, hey, there is no seat reservation created yet for that seat. So we're gonna go ahead and just insert one here. Now, again, if there's like a race condition with two people trying to insert um, the same row at the same time, one of them will throw an exception saying that, hey, um, you have a duplicate ID exception and you can basically catch that. Technically, you'd probably wanna actually check what the error was here. I'm just being kind of lazy here but I catch the exception and I just throw an error saying the, the seat is reserved, try again later. So that catches the scenario where two people try to create a brand new row for a seat at the same time. And then finally I just return a success JSON object to the post request. And then down here I catch the errors and I just go ahead and send back an error message here. So again, this is the approach that I took doing this, but there's different approaches too. You can also do a 
If you want to go look up a for update clause, you can go ahead and do that and add it to your row. And that'll kind of make the entire future transactions wait for the for update um, transaction to finish. It's less code to write, but I think it can cause a little bit of performance issues if you have a ton of concurrent operations happening at the same time. Another approach is you can actually change your isolation level on the transaction. Like one of them is called serializable, which I won't dive too much into in this video, but it's just another approach that you should go kind of read about. And I do have a video that will come out soon to kind of talk about that. And then another approach you could do is do some type of optimistic updates where you basically store some type of version on the row and you check again with a conditional write to make sure that the version that you're about to write to matches the one that you saw earlier when you did a select. My final remarks, if you saw anything in this code that really stands out of like, hey, this, you know, you have a little flaw here, be sure to point it out in the comments. Let me know if I did something wrong. Also leave a comment if there's a special way that you would try to implement some type of reservation system using like database concurrency locks. I know a lot of people in my last video said they like to use Redis. I think Redis could potentially work. I've asked some people online and I asked ChatGPT and some people say I would not use Redis mainly because it still has that issue with like the main database fails. You could lose some data due to like redundancy stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't really dive too much into the details of that. But yeah, if you enjoyed watching this video, give me a thumbs up. Hopefully it helped you learn something new uh, in terms of like dealing with databases and concurrency control. And yeah, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join. If you want to find a place to kind of hang out and ask questions to some other developers, the link will be in the description below. All right. Have a good day and happy coding.